we've come quite a long way now and it's time to talk about the the um, plugin effects that you can use with with Cubase. Cubase supports all sorts of plugin effects from third parties or the ones that come already with Cubase. And um and they're very very versatile to um, to change your sounds and everything. Let's have a look. I mean, I've mentioned before that um VST instruments are um are part of the the VST engine and um and all these effects that we can do with the standard audio files we can also do with the VST instruments so let's have a look at um a channel setup for a v VST instrument for example and um you can see we here are the effect sections you can have four insert effects one two three four and you can have eight send effects let's start with the insert effects to um, call up an insert effect you just click on this field here and choose one I'm going to choose um like a modulation one let's go with a with a with a flange effect so switch it on and to edit the effect you just click on the edit button and the effect window comes up where you can do a few changes so let's hear what it sounds like if you don't want to hear the effect you can just switch it off there and then with all these effects you've got um, a few settings down here you've got your drop downs with all the different presets and then um, the standard one is the mix button between where you sort of choose between the original signal and 100% full effect or anything in between original with just with a little bit of chorus behind it it's a flange effect Common settings for these um, effects. Okay, we'll leave that one for now. Um, th the same rules apply to the um, effects as they did to the VST instruments. That so you can um, save save separate effects, like I could save the fast effect with these settings here, or I could save the whole band, which would include one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different effects in this case. You can add more if you wanted to, you can just go into the next line. And let's choose um let's choose this one. Like a Leslie effect. And you can hear it there already. And again you've got a few buttons which that you can play around with. Just play around with these. To go through all the different settings would just take too long for now. Um, what you can hear, we've got the uh, flange effect up here and the rotary effect down there as well. Now this is just a rotary effect. This is none of the effects. I've got the bypass button up there. Insert effects are great if you want to actually change the sound completely like we've done here. We've added a flanger and the rotary effect and the sound was comp changed completely. As opposed to um, using a send effect where we keep more or less the original signal um, in general, let's say in general, and um, we add, let's say, reverb or a bit of delay to the effect, um, maybe 10% delay, 10% um, reverb or so, and we'll do that with the send effect. So let's have a look at the um, send effects. For the send effects, you need two areas. You've got the area for each channel, but then you've also got your effects rack, which you can either call up by pressing the effects button here, or by going into panels, and choosing VST send effects. 
Let's choose that one there. It brings up the VST send effects. Let me close this one. Or you can, as I've said, press that button and it also brings up the VST send effects. Now we could um, we can choose some effects. Let's say we've got like a, a reverb section here. Let's say we've got a dynamic effect. Let's just um, go with this one for now. And something else. Let's go with this one. Okay, so we've got three effects loaded into our effects rack. Um, we've got numbers here, effects one, two, three, and so on. And um, and then they start to come up here as well automatically, but you can choose which one you want. So number one is here, Reverb 32. This one and the Misterizer. But obviously we could set, for example, this one to Reverb 32 as well, and that one to Reverb 32 as well, but let's keep them on those settings. Now what does it all mean? We've got the signal going through through the inserts and then once they've gone past the inserts they start to go into the send section. And in order to activate one of these sends we need to switch a send on and then adjust how much of the original signal or of the signal here, um, sorry the um, signal after the insert goes into the reverb um, effect over there. So what we're doing is this is the channel and then we're sending from here the information into the um, send effects rack so to speak. So let's go for start. You can hear the reverb already. Now um, I've switched off the, um, the, um, the um, send button but the reverb is still switched on here and it, and it might be active for a different channel for example. So if I switch up the reverb, reverb there and switch it back on here, we still can't hear the reverb. Switch it on there as well. Now we can hear it. Now hardly any goes into the reverb um, effect. Now we've got 50% of the signal going into it and 100% of the signal. And once the signal is inside the reverb um, unit, um, we can then choose where we want to send the reverb unit's output to. At the moment, master is selected, which is our first output. And here's a little drop-down menu where you can choose different outputs here. Now, at the moment, it says master. If I open the, the master mixer again, this one, the master mixer, and um, as I've said, I've got three separate outputs on my sound card. If I activate the next one, analog 3, 4, for example, then I could, in my VST send effects rack, choose bus number 2. Because I've activated it, now it can, comes up here as well. And if I activate this one as well, I could even give it a different name. Let's call it um, John. For some strange reason. Then... Um, I can even send the signal to output John. Okay, let's say we stick with that one. And um, and I want to show you what happens now. I'm going to send the signal through the thing. And let's do some, do some measurements. Right, so here the signal goes up to minus 12 dB. And here the signal goes only to minus 19 dB. Obviously we've got a volume control here as well. So the signals have gone because the reverb has been turned down here. This is the master reverb volume control. Now this one is 100%. And um, roughly we can say that this one here is twice as loud as this one. Roughly if you, if you follow the... Um, the levels. That one's on, on 0 dB, minus 7, minus 15, minus 16, just as a rough guide. So we're sending about a quarter of the signal into the reverb unit, and uh, you can see that the um, output here is a lot quieter than that one is there. If you mute the master output, now the, we can only hear the reverb part of the signal. If you mute that one as well, and just listen to the original, 
This is the um, signal without the reverb. And here we can bring in the reverb signal. Bit by bit. I'm only doing this to show you what happens with the signal. It's, in, in practice, you wouldn't actually send it through this one unless you wanted to route the reverb to, a, to an external um, unit, for example, to tweak it or to add um, compression to it or other things. Well, let's play around with it a little bit more. I could um, switch on the second one here, turn the amount up, and the signal is being sent to the collet thing. And the collet roots out to the masters, which I'm going to go for John this time. So if we play the tune again, we've got a bit of signal coming down there as well. Increase this one. And you can hear the delay. This is the collet playing away. The collet looks like this, by the way. And imitates a tape, a typical tape delay effect, whereby you um, play the signal, uh, you record the signal onto the tape up here with the um, record head and then it plays round and you've got a few playback heads which are um, sort of one after another basically um, to, to simulate um, delay effect. What I'd like to show you is that you can not only send the effect to the colour but you can also send, if I switch this one off for example, route the signal directly to the second output. And now we're sending the stereo signal to the left side of our master bus 2. And if we um, change this one to, to bus to the right side, the signal goes to the right side now. Now keep an eye on these little white fields here. This one, the left one is selected at the moment, so I'll do this as it is. So I'll send the signal back to the left side. Now I'll select the right side and I press Alt on the keyboard as well. So I hold down Alt and I select the um, right one side here. And we can hear we've got the left side of the stereo signal going to the left side of the master bus output and the right side goes to the right side of the master bus output. And we could take this a step further. We could send, for example, the right side of the of the output to two little effects units. So I'll keep Alt pressed while I'm doing this. Let's send it to a metalizer. And the metalizer kicks in here. And it sends the signal to to output John. 